Wanted to get your reflections on Sumner and how you remember him and how you imagine the industry will ultimately remember him when history is written. Um, well, they'll remember him as a builder. I mean, he, along with Rupert Murdoch, were probably the single icons and builders of modern media, uh, uh, comp, you know, media centers. I mean, they had television, movies, video. Uh, they were they were in, fully integrated, uh, you know, media sources. So he'll be remembered as a builder uh, by having to have to go through tremendous amounts of um, adversity to create a Viacom and unite it together with CBS. And now it's uh, back together again. Um, you know, he uh, he's someone who uh, was supportive of, of, of you over the years. Uh, you you talked to him even, I think, over the, in, in, in the, the last years of his life. How did he reflect on what had happened to the industry? Um, he wasn't a person that reflected upon what happened <laughs> or what was going on. He was a person that would talk about things that he did or accomplished or things that he might have missed, possibly. Uh, none that I could personally remember. He was, he was a very a committed, absolute sort of a person, uh, binary in a certain way. Um, tremendous amount of focus and concentration. I'm sure you've read his book, uh, where he was a code yep. breaker. Um, and he, I think he graduated number one in this class at Harvard. He was very, in extremely intelligent, well-read and people often didn't find him to be the most approachable. And I was one of those people that didn't find him approachable in, in the beginning and Andrew, as you know, for 35 years, I will every two weeks go out and meet somebody. Um, you know, I call them curiosity conversations in anything other than what I did for a living. So when a few of his uh, employees said, Sumner wants to do this meet with you and he wants to do this, like, uh, this television series, which is a documentary called Icon uh, Iconoclast. I was very, very resistant. I said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because I don't meet media uh, emperors <laughs> because I don't want to get involved in any kind of a, po a power dynamic or political dynamic within these uh, power systems. And so, but they were so persuasive that I ended up meeting with Sumner and I ended up meeting him. He said, meet me on the Ventura Boulevard at an aquarium. There's a famous aquarium uh, a, a, a tropical fish store uh, that he wanted me to meet him at. And so I said, sure. And I had this window into his humanity because he had such intimacy with these fish. And he knew, uh, he knew at least a thousand different types of varieties of fish, which was really kind of impressive. And again, sort of a window into a different perspective into Sunder Redstone. Right. And, and that became the beginning of our relationship. And we did do the iconoclast. We shot it together. Um, he was supposed to ask me questions as I was supposed to ask him questions. And it seemed as though I was asking all the questions. So uh, he was coaxed to ask questions of me, which he found that a little difficult. So we shot it, did it, and then we had to do reshoots. Because and so he, he came to my art studio and he struggled with it, but he asked all sorts of questions about the composition of what it, what I would you know paint and what what I would right. use uh, oil acrylic oil stick and pencil and he kind of found that interesting. But he was a person that he learned by reading things. He assimilated what he learned and he could immediately apply it. And as we all know, he was absolutely fearless, absolutely fearless. He.